I just want to start by congratulating you on, on the documentary. I thought it was a really extraordinary experience, actually, which mixed, you know, a lot of uh, pathos and also a lot of kind of joy uh, uh, at kind of being a part of this community for, for an hour. Um, could you talk a little bit about how you came into contact with uh, Glenn Kurtz and his story? Yeah, um, that was actually on Facebook. I'm a historian and worked for a long time as a film critic, so that's why I think um, Facebook's algorithm thought it was a good idea to show me this um, post called Three Minutes in Poland. And I found it a very intriguing title, so I clicked on it, and it was a post about the book he wrote, Three Minutes in Poland. And um, that was about the, the footage he rediscovered that his grandfather had filmed. And it also uh, said um, that you could see this footage on the website of the Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington, where Glenn had donated the film to. So um, I went over there immediately and watched it and was very um, fascinated by it, firstly because it's for a big part in color, and we tend to see that part of history so much in black and white, you have the feeling it almost that it happened in black and white, but here it was in, in um, color and showing this um, children that you really have the feeling they look you in the eye, they want to stay in the, in the frame and you see a very um, vivid and vibrant um, community. Um, which it is rare to have images of, especially in uh, in color. So, and you also immediately have the conflicting emotions because we, you know, you feel very close to the people you you see. It has a kind of contemporary feel because of the color, but at the same time, um, you're very much divided by history because we know what would happen to these people starting a year later, and they do not. So that, of course, gives a lot of uh, tension uh, to the material while you're watching it and conflicting emotions. You know, you want to scream, go oh, away, get out. But you can't because they're, they're locked in this, uh, in this um, movie. So um, while I was watching that, for it for the first time. Um, and when it was finished after three minutes something, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> um, wouldn't it be great if we could make this experience last longer to know these people um, better to keep that past in our presence for, for a little while longer. And, and, cheat time a bit in a way. But I was not working as a, uh, as a filmmaker, more as a uh, film critic, a journalist. Um, but then the Rotterdam Film Festival asked me um, to make a video essay for their new Critics' Choice program. That was way back in 2015. And then I thought, okay, this is my chance. And usually that is about contemporary fiction film, but I thought, okay, I can ask them if I can try to work with this um, you know, old footage. And they said, okay, go and try. And I contacted uh, uh, Glenn Kurtz, and he was cautiously interested. I sent him a long email explaining um, my ID. And then we made a kind of 20, 25 minute version for the uh, Rotterdam Film Festival. And I still had the feeling after that that we could do much more with the material, find out much more um, things about the footage. So I looked for a producer and then worked for five more. And here we are. <laughs> yeah. And one thing that strikes me um, about this documentary is just how experiential and immersive uh, it is considering it is you know a, it, somewhat a, a, an academic uh, exercise it, it does feel very uh, like i say immersive um how important was it for you to sort of build this world not just academically but in a very kind of sensory uh, kind of way 
Well, that that was very Im important for me for, from the start. I wanted it, on the one hand, to be a kind of detective story that you really try to find out as much as possible um, about the people we see and the and the and the things um, we see to see yeah what what can you find out you know you get these kind of strange details that you cannot from a movie alone unless you film the, the, the street sign or something where it was taken but you can find out because of shadows you can actually find out what time uh, it was when you all the footage you see so all that kind of strange um, effects or see what kind of weather it was that day you know all kind of information but at the same time i wanted it to yeah to just let let the viewer be with that world and let it breathe and you know get it get really acquainted um, um with it on your own um terms that was let's say the second uh road we we follows so and uh, was that the the thing that was behind the decision to not feature any talking heads in in the film because i thought that was quite an interesting uh, decision for, for you know almost all of the film is uh, fragments of the, of the three yeah. minutes of footage yeah, absolutely yeah that was that was my first idea let's say about that anything else that you added would would be a uh, would not be an addition, but the but the up opposite and uh, abstraction. So I thought it would work much stronger if we really uh, focused on those three minutes and 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 see what they can bring us. And also, I think it it shows what a what an incredible amount of of information and also let's say information you. you when you watch something like that, you you see things that are not easily written about how, how people move, how they um, are in contact with each other. Do they put their arms around each other? Or sh the kids are often kind of shoving each other, and that are the kind of details that you can show, but are but don't end up in the history books. Um, let's say, the facial expressions of people, how, how they move, that sort of uh, of thing. So for, yeah, for that reason, all that reasons, it, it seemed for me a, uh, the best idea just to keep the focus with this um, footage from 1938. And I think that footage works so strongly because it's quite unmediated it's not propaganda in in any way and it's also not artistic in any way you really have the feeling that david kurtz just um pushed the button and then recorded so for me it's also really a, a testament to the incredibly raw power of of uh, film that gives you a, a relationship with another can give you a relationship with another time and another place that no painting or sculpture can give you. Yeah, and um, just briefly, because I, I, I want to talk a little bit more about, um, you know, the film's exploration of, you know, film itself and in, in that kind of almost meta philosophical way. But um, I, it struck me that w one of the things that actually helps sort of the immersive experience is um, Helena Bonham Carter's narration, because she actually, she, you know, she has kind of one of those voices that sort of invites you into the world. You know, yes. um, how, how did you get her on board? What was that process like? Yes. Um, well, we were looking for a, for a beautiful voice and also a voice that could precisely do that, to not feel um, distant like this authority that will tell us how it is, but that she could really go on that journey of discovery with the with the viewer. That was for me very uh, important, and I think because she's an actress, she could could convey that um, um, idea very very well. And um, so, going going back to the film's exploration of um, 
film itself as as, as like a physical object as well. Um, it, you know, is the philosophy of the moving image is that something that has always interested you, or is it something that you know was was kind of sparked, uh, you know, or, or enhanced by Kurtz's uh, story? Um, I think there was something that that always interested me, and that's why this story um, resonated so much with me. I'm always very interested in the in the beginning of film and photography because then suddenly you know people have have chased that, of course, and, and tried to invent it, but it was hard. And um, suddenly the end of for in the 18th century for photography and the end of the 18th century, for 19th century, sorry, um, for, for film. Um, yeah, that suddenly gives us such a different um, um, entry into the, into the past than, than, um, than we have for most other um, periods in, in history. And here, of course, um, it is extra um, poignant for me because um, we see something that the Nazis were trying to erase. So in, in that sense, it is kind of like, it, it feels already like a small victory that we still have that footage and that people have um, gone through the trouble of, of um, um, uh, restoring it and so on. And, and you see the, the fragility, we almost didn't have it anymore. And the fragility of, 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 of the material and also that, that it is actually a, a material, it's not a, a virtual, but it's really a, a thing made by uh, a celluloid and even by uh, animal uh, bones. Um, I lost my track of thought now. <laughs> uh, I mean, can, can you... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's very much a film against um, erasure. In this, we still have this um, miraculously this 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 fragment of a world that is um, um, lost to us. But here we have this fragment that we can somehow, for a sm very small part, of course, and see something of it um, is left to us. I mean, I, I thought it was interesting because a lot of early um, photography and film theory revolves around the idea of, uh, of, of images kind of stealing the soul. Mm -hmm. I felt like this film was kind of coming more in the angle of, 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 of film and moving images and photography kind of preserving the soul. Um, was that an interesting concept for you to, to explore? Um, yeah, soul, I don't, I don't know that so maybe not, but um, the fact that you can um, preserve something is 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 a huge deal. I think that we don't um, um, realize enough maybe how um, uh, special that is. And of course, there's something if it's scarce, it's easier to to realize. And here, of course, you have. This is scarce. There's not a lot of color material from from um, uh, Jewish um, people in Poland in the in the thirties. So I think you, you then realize how how special it is to have um, film and what film um, can do, and you you start to you know imagine what what the first people who actually saw movies must have felt a kind of incredible thrill that, oh my God, that you can actually um, have images of, of places where you've never been or, or, or people that you, um, you can still uh, cherish on a, on a moving image. So uh, yes, that all comes into play for me, I think. Yeah. Um, Finally, I, I wanted to ask about, there's an interesting line 
um, about how, uh, you know, the presence of the camera kind of dissolved social hierarchy in the community sort of momentarily. Um, you know, can you talk a little bit about that concept of like the camera being a, a, a you know, a democratic tool? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I think it's something that most people are, are even today, very well, there's so many pictures taken and selfies and so on, but still, um, even today, people, for instance, you're going, you're in a, in a situation with a group of people, and um, then a photo has to be taken. And suddenly, you're putting your arm around someone, you would never have done that if the camera was not there you would not have touched that person so there is something about the camera that that changes um, reality i think people are more standing closer you put your arm around someone for the picture that you would never do in 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 reality so we all have that um experience i think for what what movie camera is yeah alters reality and i think that is also good to um be aware of that when you watch this um uh, this uh, footage that that also also happens um there and is very um significant in this case because it brought people next to each other who normally would not be um acquainted yes yeah, well, I think it's, it's one of the many really beautiful things uh, about this film. And um, I'm very excited for more people to be able to see it. And um, I want to just wish you luck with, with the rest, of, with the rest of, of, you know, the rolling out of the film. And yeah, I just want to thank you for making it as well, because I found it a, a really extraordinary experience, really. I've never really seen anything of that nature. Um, so it's been really great to, to speak to you. And um, yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.